we are on the way to pick up Wendy Whitmore. Senior Vice President of Unit 42 and an incredible cybersecurity leader. Her work in threat intelligence is so, so incredible. So let's go pick her up and we'll take a trip together in our Waymo. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Great to be here today. And we're going to have so much fun. Well, Wendy, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, well, so Donna, it's great to be here today. Thank you for yeah, inviting for me. Uh, so I lead a team at Palo Alto Networks called Unit 42. And Unit 42 is represented by consultants who specialize in breach investigations, Ooh. as well as a more proactive type of work. So pen testing, offensive security yeah. that prepare an organization to defend more effectively. Uh, we also have security at researchers, so intelligence oh, analysts, reverse engineers, uh, who are focused on identifying patterns across all of these different types of attacks. And then we have threat hunters who are mining mm. data you know, across our XDR, so it's cloud data, network data, and endpoint data, all uh, you know, being analyzed to, again, identify attack patterns so that we can more effectively protect clients throughout the world. So that, that's a really interesting portfolio of different kinds of intelligence that you're pulling together. So I'm kind of curious, what kinds of things are you seeing? That's a great question. I would say we're kind of seeing a little bit of everything, um, okay. anything and everything. So mm. I usually would kind of differentiate cyber criminals versus nation state actors, right? Okay. Foreign countries who are looking to collect information for some sort of objective. Yeah. But on the cyber criminal side, they're usually interested in how can I take data and turn it into money, right? And so on the cyber criminal side in particular, we obviously see a lot of ransomware attacks that's mm. in the news every day. Yeah. Um, but the speed with which attackers are getting into an environment and then when they start stealing data or exfiltrating it uh, has mm. because continually decreased so in some cases it's as short as 12 hours now yeah right which makes it more challenging for defense teams yeah, um, great to really be able to respond to that um, everything from you know the use of generative AI to really fuel and propagate uh, some of these attacks yeah, yeah. Um, the sophistication side of that like actual spear phishing attacks yeah. um, the communications on the written side and then on the voice side so we're seeing attackers that are successfully being able to take someone's voice emulate it mm. and then use that against for example a help desk who is um, yeah. you know identifying like very uh, identity friends. verification yeah. so scale yeah so scale is interesting over the past year this is the first year in history that we've actually seen widespread vulnerabilities mm. and the exploitation of those okay. being used as the initial access vector more successfully than spear phishing emails. So maybe we could talk a little bit more about artificial intelligence when it comes to cybersecurity. So we know the threat actors are using it, um, but there've got to be ways that our own teams could be using it for that same set of getting speed and um, more sophistication in our own operations. Oh, absolutely. We look at accelerating uh, the time to detect. All of those numbers can be really impacted in a positive way yeah. with use of Gen AI. Certainly, like organizations like ours who have built technology for so long have had precision AI in integrated into our portfolio for 10 years or more, oh, right? That's great. So it's really interesting then to kind of see that how Gen AI has moved to the forefront because there are so many consumer applications of it, mm -hmm. right? But yeah. when we apply both of those together, you can leverage so much of that within products to be able to leave what is needed for the human analytical yeah. side. Oh, so this is our Skysong Innovation Center. Okay, um, yeah, what's going on here? Lots of fantastic stuff's going on here. We have lots of startups and companies and partnerships with Dell and Starbucks and um, Amazon all happen in this space. It seems like with so much innovation going on in Phoenix and Arizona in particular, right, with all the yeah. companies that yeah. you've got no shortage of opportunities to really create those that space for your students. So this is your first Waymo ride. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, I don't want to jinx us, but so far, so good. Probably a much better driver than I am. <laughs> well, it's certainly got a lot of, uh, of data to that point in sure. terms of how it can be a more defensive driver. As a university, one of the things we're doing is preparing future leaders. What are the kinds of things that we might consider as we think about helping to support, develop, foster leaders in the future? One of the areas that I think is so under 
focused, uh, especially in technical fields, is actually the ability to communicate. Mm -hmm. And I, it's funny because I use this ex um, example too with some of my team members, because we have uh, typically on a, let's just take consultants. Consultants are different than researchers, but from a consulting perspective, you usually have two separate tracks. One that as you, and, and they stay very you know closely linear to start, right? Everyone needs to continue to get basic skills and learn more technical proficiency and learn how to communicate with clients. But over time, often it becomes a technical versus a leadership track. Yeah. And the deeply technical may become you know distinguished engineers in organizations, mm -hmm. as principal researchers, and they are experts in their craft. But I think oftentimes they can think, well, um, I'm going to go that path and I don't need to worry about, you know, managing people and interacting. But the reality is, is even to get those promotions, uh, you're often evaluated on how good of a team player is this person. Mm -hmm. We can really focus people on how to work well with others. Um, you know, we all talked about group projects in college, right? Like, oh, they're horrible. They have this <laughs> person that didn't do anything and another person that did everything. And right. And um, but the reality is, as painful as this can be, that really does emulate life. Yeah. Right. So the more that we can kind of wor work on integrating that into our learning, I think the better. This it's, has been a great ride. Yeah, it's been so enjoyable to get to talk to you and learn, you know, what the or what your organization yeah, and the university are focused on. Do you think you'll ride a Waymo again? Is that only it? if it's with you? <laughs> well, we we can arrange that anytime you're in the valley, as they branch out into other parts of the country. <laughs>